For example, if you want to translate um, Spanish, French, and German in all at once, uh, you can run a comment like es uh, translate dash l es f r d e. It will handle Spanish, French, and German all at once. And if you want to translate all supported language. Hi everyone, I'm Lee Starr and I'm a Principal Cloud Advocate at Microsoft and I'm here today to talk about the Microsoft Co-op Translator. This is a really innovative solution and it's an open source project which has really been designed to simplify the process of translating markdown files, images across multiple different languages. So if you've got a GitHub repo that you want to make available to the world, this is a great solution. So today we're going to show you how the co-op translator is applied to projects. And we've applied it to some real world projects, such as a Fi3 cookbook. And we're going to show you a quick demo of how to use a Fi3 library, uh, the, the, the library to use co-op translator just in a terminal to actually deploy and implement this. So today I've got Song, who's a co-op translator maintainer who's joining me, and he's made massive contributions to this project. This project came from a student hackathon project, and we took it within Microsoft and adapted it, and now it's an official open source repository where we're using it and deploying it and sharing it across the world. So, Song, can you give us a bit of a background about the Co-op Translator? Um, absolutely. In today's global tech environment, um, many developers students and researchers don't speak English as their first language, like me. Uh, when working on open source project or creating um, technical documentation, it's crucial to ensure that your content is accessible to people all around the world. But translating everything manually is extremely time consuming and labor intensive. That's exactly where Co-op Translator comes in. So Song, tell me a bit about you, you know, who are you, what do you do, you know, tell, tell me who you are. Oh, <laughs> hi everyone, I'm Song, I'm currently maintainer of Co-op Translator, also I'm student ambassador at Microsoft. Excellent, so yeah, so we met because you're a student ambassador in the Microsoft yeah. program, and you know, this is one of the great opportunities we try to give our Microsoft oh. value professionals and student ambassadors is getting involved in these projects and becoming maintainers, building their portfolio. So this is a great opportunity for Song to demonstrate his technical skills. He's, he's amazing at building and implementing solutions. He's got a real world project now. And again, being part of this maintainer program is building his portfolio. So we're using lots of different services in the AI translator. So we're using things like the Azure AI services. We're using Azure OpenAI. And we're also using Azure Computer Vision. So one of the key things that we want to do is be able to take all the content from a repo and be able to translate that. So it includes the text, so the Markdown, README files and documentation. But more importantly, images that you may have in your repo as well. And again, lots of images now have contextual information on them, which may be in English. So we want to be able to translate the image, actual text, and reimpose the translated version of that text onto the image so your translations go from an English repo to a Korean repo or to a Chinese repo or to a Spanish repo. So what we've been doing is, is experimenting with the solutions and we've been working with a lot of the open source curricula that we have within Microsoft. So we run lots of open source curriculum resources and samples. And one of those is the Phi3 cookbook, which is a cookbook about the Phi3 family models of small language models. And what we've found is that we've, we've built the content in English, you know, my primary language English, and we've got lots of people around the globe who want to utilize this. And we've been experimenting with the co-op translator in translating that content to various different languages. And that's allowed us to make that content more scalable. And again, it's highly technical information. So there's lots of samples, lots of explanations about how the small language models work. And it's really crucial that you know, we try these tools to make sure that the formatting is correct and that the material is valid. So again, having a global population of students and MVPs has really allowed us to build this, validate it and test it. And Song's been implementing those changes and feedback. So again, this is an open source project. So we want your feedback. We want people to give us issues and tell us about how you're using it. Because again, this is why we're building these open source contributions. 
So, Song, it's over to you. So, if you want to talk us through, you know, some of these scenarios of how the solution works and how you've implemented it, that would be great and shows how Co-op Translator actually works in real life. Um, okay, um, let me share my screen. Um, translating Vitri cookbook manually would have taken weeks, but with Co-op Translator, we automated this entire process, um, including both markdown files and images. We completed this, uh, completed this process um, in just a few hours, and now the Vitri cookbook is um, accessible to developers worldwide in multiple languages. Uh, now let's take a closer look at how Coop Translator um, organizes the translations. Uh, when you use Coop Translator, uh, it creates two folders, one for translations and one for translated images. Um, in the translations folder, you will find the translated files organized by the language code. Um, for example, let's, uh, let's navigate to the KO folder, which contains the Korean translations. Um, here is a sample of Korean translations. Yes. Um, as you can see, uh, Co op Translator um, keeps the markdown format uh, while ensuring the translation is accurate and accessible. And you will find that the image, image in the original markdown um, that have, uh, have been fully translated into the new one that contains the text into Korean, like this. I think this is a, a really interesting point, Song. You know, oh, so yes, what, yes. what we've done is we've actually built the system. So the, the original image, as I, as I mentioned in the intro, was, is in, it was in English. And what we're doing is we're oh, using the multiple different oh, Azure yeah. AI services to take that image, create bounding boxes on the image to highlight where those text elements are, then taking that and converting it to text. And then we're actually doing OCR to then convert that language back, but then resizing the image so that the image stays in mm. proportion. I know you're going to cover a lot more about that in a bit, but I think it's just a really important point that this image was in English and now it's in Korean oh. and it looks exactly the same. I can share here is the original English version for comparison. Yeah. But again, we've not changed any of that content. This has all been done with the Co-op Translator. You know, so from a user's perspective, you don't need to know about the mathematics and the, the, the systems and the formulas behind this, you know, the tooling that was used. This is just simply a Python script that you run and it creates those two folders. So, yes. Song, let's talk about how, you know, actually you get running the Co-op Translator. Oh, yes. Now that we've seen the results, um, let me show you how to use uh, this tool for your own project. Um, running Co-op Translator is very simple. Um, with just one command, you can create translations uh, any over 40 languages. Um, for example, Let's imagine you're in a situation where you want to translate this project called Co-op Translator into Korean. Um, to do this, um, you will simp simply run a command translate translate dash l ko, where ko uh, is the language code of Korean. And, and we're just if you using want to the locales, aren't we? Oh. So we're just using you know, the locales. So again, if you wanted to translate it into a different language, you just change those yeah. two characters. So give us some examples of other languages we could use. Oh, sure. Uh, for example, if you want to translate um, Spanish, French, and German in all at once, uh, you can run a comment like es uh, translate dash l es f r d e. It will handle Spanish, French, and German all at once. And if you want to translate all supported language, you can uh, run a command like translate l uh, But I don't recommend this because it can be a quite um, time-consuming task 
Um, instead, I, I recommend splitting the work among multiple contributors uh, with each, uh, handling one or two languages. Or handling one languages at once gradually. Mm, Excellent. So, you know, once nah. we've done this, you know, how long does it actually take to do it then? Um, it depends on the um, file size, uh, project size, but in the, uh, for example, let's try it. Yeah, let's try it, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> If you run a command, translate dash L, K, O. You will find the um, translation progress bar that tracks your um, translation process. Um, maybe, maybe for 19 images, we, we will take um, uh, just uh, four minutes. Which is really fast. So before you know, if oh yes, it's, it's really fast. Like this, yeah. <laughs> it would have took weeks, you know, to especially and, and again, the images would have required design, artwork, translation, redesign, publishing. So this is like you know, from weeks of time to minutes, is is a huge yes. opportunity. So you know, are there any problems like if you know your system crashes midway through, what happens? Oh yes. Uh, if you have to stop this process like this, um, um, there's no need to worry because call translator only saves the only saves the files that have been fully translated, fully translated. Um, so uh, maybe, um, for example, maybe you you have to take care of something else or or just turn off your computer for a meal break mm. there's no need to worry co-op translator just um, saves only the completed files so where when you restart it uh, it will pick up right where you left off cool so again you know if, if you yeah. have an issue or a power cut or something goes wrong don't worry, it will carry on processing and pick up from where it lasts. And I think this is a really important thing about when you're using AI-based services because we're using tokens and calls to those APIs and we're paying for that token call and utilization of the API. So we don't want to be reprocessing content that we've already done. So I think that's a really important point. So Sung, you know, you've shown us how, you know, what the Aiken Co-op Translator is. You know, we've got a dedicated repo for that. We also have the Python library that's had over 4,000 downloads, which is amazing. So there's oh, lots yeah. of people around the globe who are utilizing this. You've shown us in the terminal how to actually just use the Python library. You know, it's a single command. It will take inputs of the translation and the output in the different languages. It will can do multiple mm -hmm. languages at any one time. So, you know, in terms of utilization, what's, you know, how much does this cost if someone was to run this? So, for example, you know, we did the Phi 3 cookbook, which is fairly extensive. How much does it cost to actually do that? Maybe um, I actually tried the um, try to translate the Phi 3 cookbook into multiple languages uh, and it caused it, it was uh, just about um, two two dollars um, but uh, yeah just just two dollars two dollars yeah so two dollars to translate an entire repo to a different language which you know is, is phenomenal so you know i think it, it, for me it's been like really incredible to see how this project can, you know, translate an entire repo, markdown images, text. You know, we, we don't change the code structure as well. And this is really important for code sample repos. Mm -hmm. So what will actually happen is when the application will actually check for any code samples and exclude the code samples from translation. So it's looking for the specific markdown elements. Um, and again, notebook files or solution files, it will literally just translate the markdown co uh, content, which again is, is really key. So, you know, this is a, an amazing open source project that's going to save lots of time. 
again, there is some disclaimers that we've added to the content that is produced. So when the content is produced, it says this content has been produced by using AI services. So again, you know, there may be factual inconsistencies, etc. We do recommend that you keep those disclaimers on the solutions that you build just you know just to have that additional protection because we are using machine based translation again you know we really encourage everyone to get involved in this this is an open source project you know song is a student he's going to be he's a developer of the future he wants to be a future leader this is a great way of proving yourselves as developers github is an amazing opportunity and being part of that community effort really teaches you things like you know code documentation working in groups, being able to commit and use code uh, code solutions. You know, so GitHub is a real key skill, and it's great using GitHub on your own, but once you start using it in a project with other people, this is when you really do enhance your learning experiences. Again, this is an open source project, so we want your feedback. We want suggestions for new features. And again, we would love to see how you're using this solution. So. If you're building solutions and using the co-op translator, we would love to hear from you and see what you've built and utilize with this technology. So we're super excited to see what the community can do with co-op translator. We hope it's going to make technology more accessible. You know, with our whole goal is around that diversity, inclusion, developers are global across the globe. And again, we want that content to really shine to all those users of that technology. So having the markdown and technical documentation images all translated and we want to make this as simple as possible that's the whole goal of the co-op translator is to make translation as simple as possible so please if you do have any uh, issues comments suggestions feedback we would love to have it please just go to the co-op translator repo create an issue and we, we would love to start having that conversation with you so Song, you know, it's been a great pleasure working with you over the last few months. It's been great to see you grow and awesome. You know, we've done so much work together, which has been amazing. And again, if you're interested in becoming a student ambassador and, and following Song, you know, through his journey and looking at what other activities you can get involved in, please do look at our student ambassadors program. And again, many of our student ambassadors go on to become our MVP, so our Microsoft Value Professionals. So again, by doing these projects, you build that great experience, great exposure. You get to meet people like me, you get to meet other teams within Microsoft, and it really does build you that portfolio. So please do check out our GitHub page, and we really look forward to hearing from you about how you're using Co-op Translator. So Song, over to you to say goodbye and thank everyone. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, thank you for your time. And um, in um, when you uh, in uh, sorry, if you <clears throat> if you want to try uh, to co-op translator or contributing to each development, um, please feel free to visit our GitHub repository. There will there you will find a detailed guide on how to set up Azure AI services. Um, how to how to install the project and how to use it. Um, we welcome all feedback and contributions. Thank you, everyone, and and thank you for joining Open at Microsoft. <laughs>